Hello and welcome to From the Heart Friday, session 44, with me, Jessica Brigden of Jess B Creative Cardiology. Thanks so much for joining me today. It seems like hopefully spring is finally here. In New York yesterday, we had some terrible wind and rain that came through. It knocked some trees down up the road at the neighbor's house, which took down some power lines and blew a transformer, and so we were without power for several hours yesterday. Um, but the rain has stopped. I wouldn't say the sun is out, but the temperature's not too bad today. I've got the door open, so Ziggy's been going in and out, and at least it's a little bit nicer. So hopefully all of that April rain is bringing some May flowers. So if anything, I'm dressing the part. I thought, well, you know what? I don't have anywhere to go, but why not just get a little dressed up. So I am channeling spring today. Hey, Mary Jo. Hey, Rachel. Hi, Doris. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I have some, well, I think are some pretty awesome cards for you. We're going to play with what is called a double pleated fancy fold. <laughs> it's really cool. So let me just show you. I did, I, I, tested this out. In fact, this is actually a sneak peek. Um, each month I participate in, um, I'm on a design team with uh, 15 other designers. So there's 16 of us. And each month we publish a tutorial bundle for our customers. And our May theme is fancy or fun folds. So what I'm going to show you today is actually my tutorial contribution um, to the group. Uh, so you guys are getting a sneak peek. I don't always do that, but this fold is so amazing uh, that sometimes I think just a written tutorial doesn't quite do it justice. It's a little bit easier to see things um, when you have a video step-by-step. -step. So I thought this would be a good addition to that tutorial. If you are interested in these tutorials, you can get it for free just by placing an order in my online store. So my links and my May host code, everything, are there in the uh, comment section for you. So let me show you how cool is that. I am using, again, the Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series paper from Stampin' Up. This paper is so amazing. I've almost, I've got scraps left. That is all I have left. I actually ordered two more packages because this paper is so amazing. It's gorgeous with the gold foil designs. So if you can see that on here, Yes, yeah, so we are gonna do this double pleating, which makes a really cool accent uh, for the front of the card. And then I have this just as a regular um, opening. Although, well, I've already cut my card bases to the five and a half by eight and a half. But if you wanted this to stand up um, so that you really could display it more, you might wanna cut your cardstock at four and a quarter by 11. Hey, Marianne. Yeah, so I hope you guys, if you're a part of my team, I already posted the tutorials um, in our team group. So go check, download those there. Um, I send them out in our newsletter too. But um, yes, so follow along and I will show you how to make these. All right, so I'm going to do the whole flipperoo. <laughs> Try not to make you too dizzy and we'll get started. Okay, so I was flipping it around. Oh, I have to reverse the camera. There we go. Okay, so you can kind of see up there in the right corner. Whoops, what happened? I don't want to rotate my phone. All right, something popped up on my screen. Okay, so my May host code, brand new for this month, QV6GTRSX. Okay, so this is the card. We are using Stampin' Up's ornate style stamp set. So I'm just using the stamp set today. I'm not pairing it with any of the dies. Um, in fact, you just need the stamp set, uh, the Stampin' Up's Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series paper, or any beautiful paper of your choice. Um, Stampin' Up's papers work wonderful because they're all double-sided, so you get that cool look when you um, do the pleats there. And then for the front, I have used the layering ovals dies. So with the layering ovals, you get both the regular ovals and the scallops. So what I've used for this card here, this is the largest of the scallops. Hey, Sally. So I'm using the largest scalloped oval die. 
And then this is, it's not quite, it's like the, it's the third largest. So like one, two, this is the third largest of the regular ovals. Okay, so I actually pre-die cut those today, so you didn't have to wait for me to do that. So it's pretty minimal on supplies. So you need um, two colors of contrasting cardstock. So for the first card here, I have mint macaron and some terracotta tile. And then I'm pulling in some whisper white. And then I'm going to show you another variation with these beautiful daisies. And this on the back side has the terracotta as well. Um, but for this one, I'm pulling in old olive as my card base to accent with these. Okay, so um, if you have the tutorial bundle, then that's great because I have all of these wonderful measurements for you. It seems like it's really dark in here. I think it's going to rain. So we turn on some extra lights and hopefully I can get some light. A little bit of light better for you. Hey, Nicole, how are you guys? Hi, Diana. All right, so I just turned some extra lights on. I hope that helps a little bit. I've got my camera light going. All right, so like I was saying, if you um, make a purchase from me, then I will send you this tutorial for this project along with 15 other amazing fancy folds. If you're a member of my creative cardiology team, then I've already sent you these tutorials. Um, and if if you're not either, then um, grab a pen and you'll want to write some of these things down. Okay, so we're going to start. The first one here is our mint macaron card base. So this is five and a half by eight and a half. So just a half sheet of paper. I'm going to score that at four and a quarter. So if you guys have been watching me, for the most part, I like to do my cards that way at the five and a half by eight and a half. But I was saying, if you would like to make this more of a card that you could stand up on a mantle or something, uh, you might want to cut it at four and a quarter by 11. All right, so we've got this much. All right, I'm not going to glue this down yet, but I have a layer of terracotta tile, and this is four by five and a quarter. Then you also need a piece of Whisper White, so we're just going a quarter of inch smaller. This is three and three quarter by five, so you can see how we're kind of building the layers. Again, not gluing any of this down until I get my fold all done, because then I'll have my ribbon go around the back and we'll secure it to the front. But just have those ready, we'll set them aside. I've got my scalloped oval in terracotta as well as one in Whisper White, so sticking those in my pile. All right, so here's the big thing that we need, your designer series paper. So you need to cut this we're gonna get into some like nitty gritty little details here. So you need to cut this to five and three eighths. So just under five and a half inches. So five and three eighths by 10 inches long, okay? So that's five and three eighths by 10. Now I'm going to pull in my trimmer or if you have Stampin' Up! scoreboard, any of these handy things, we're going to do quite a bit of measuring, and I'm going to open the arm here because we're going to extend past the six inch mark. So let's move some of these things out of the way. My uh, desk is just a little too covered in stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I make an incredible mess when I'm stamping. Okay, so on this long side, this is the 10 inch side, we're going to start you see that over here at the one inch? So just put your cutter blade out of the way. So cutter blade is dark. Dark means death, that means cut. All right, so we're going to use the light scoring blade. And this is the same whether you have the, the older Stampin' Trimmer or this is the new one. Uh, the lighter blade is the scoring one. So we're going to score this at one inch. Then we're going to slide it over to one and a half. A lot of measurements here, okay? One, one and a half. Now, two and a half. Now, three inches. And slide it over to four. And four and a half. And then, 
five and a half. So you'll kind of notice they're going in alternating amounts of half inch to an inch. So that was the five and a half one. Now we're going to six and to seven and seven and a half, eight and a half. Okay, and then the nine inch mark. So that's a whole lot of scoring. Okay, I, you know, I'm gonna do my next one um, at the same time, just so that you guys can get those measurements again. So along the 10 inch side, I wanna make sure my daisies are upright. On the 10 inch side, we are just scoring at one inch, one and a half, two and a half, three, four, four and a half, five and a half, six, seven, seven and a half, eight and a half, right up here. And then lastly, at the nine inch mark. Okay, all right. So now we're going to mark some little lines. So if you have a pencil or just a light pen here, so we're going to mark along this 10 inch side, we're gonna mark the top and the bottom, okay, at the four and a half and the five and a half inch mark. So go ahead and put your paper back in here and at four and a half, then go up here and mark just a little line at the top and the bottom. And then you're gonna slide it over to five and a half and mark it again at the top and the bottom. So I'm using a pen. Um, you know, it really didn't make a difference because when you, I don't know if you can see that in there. So I used a pen on my original, but it's gonna be folded under. And so you're not even gonna notice that it's in there. But if you're a perfectionist, that's fine. Just use a pencil and then you can erase it. Okay, so we marked the top and the bottom at the four and a half mark as well as the five and a half mark. All right, now we're gonna mark, we're gonna turn it 90 degrees. So this is the five and three eighths inch side. And we are going to mark, and we're gonna go into sixteenths of an inch here. So two inches and then one, two, three sixteen. So two and three sixteens. So mark that at the top. So the reason I'm doing this is because I can slide my pen right there in the track of the trimmer. It's a little bit easier. So that's two and three sixteenths. And then we're gonna go to three and three sixteenths. So one, two, three. All right, and then do the same thing. Mark it right in the track there, okay? And the reason we're doing that is because to get the angle of the fold, hey Nancy, how are ya? We're doing some fancy measuring here for our double pleated fancy fun fold card. <laughs> All right, so we've scored our papers. Now we've marked little, little I'm calling these little tick marks. Um, because we are going to use those to cut, okay? So now we're going to cut each corner. So can you guys see how I have this angle? I'm gonna fold this in, I don't need that anymore. Extended, and then I can bring this here so you can see it just a little bit better. There we go, okay? So the little marks that we did on the short side, can you see that? We're gonna put that in the top track, and then we're going to turn the paper, and we have two little marks here on the long side. So this mark and this mark, we wanna line them both up in the trimmer, and we're going to, this time we're going to use the dark, the dark for death. 
<laughs> we're gonna cut that corner off. Okay, so we're going to do this on all four sides, going from mark to mark. So this time we're doing that mark. And so you wanna go from the mark to the mark that's closest. Okay, so just line those little marks right up in the track of your trimmer. And you can see how it's kind of starting to take shape a little bit. So you're gonna do this on all four sides. So line that up. And trust me, you may wanna try this on a piece of like copy paper, just to scrap first. Um, because I ruined a good half sheet of designer series paper the first time because I cut to the wrong tick mark and basically ruined my corners. All right, so we've got one more. I know they're hard to see. Okay, so just make sure they're in there. And when you're done, it should, should look like a face mask, <laughs> right? <laughs> a little wider in the front and it tapers on the sides. <laughs> Guess you can all relate to that now since we're all uh, wearing masks everywhere we, everywhere we go. Okay, so that's the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the second one as well. So I haven't marked my lines on here yet. So again, we are going to, on the long side, we are going to mark the four and a half mark at the top. So just stick your pen right there in the track. So we're marking at four and a half and five and a half. Okay, and then turn your paper 90 degrees to the short side and you're gonna go to two and three sixteenths. So the three sixteenths are these, not the, not the quarters, not the one, but the little, kind of like the smallest one that's south of the metric line there. Okay, so one, two, and three sixteenths. And we're gonna do that at the top and the bottom. And then you're gonna to go to three and three sixteenths. And again, mark the top and the bottom. Okay, so then we are doing, again, this one is a little bit easier to see on this um, paper is a little bit lighter. So again, so from tick mark to tick mark, so the two that are closest, okay? So then slide that off. So you're cutting off each corner. All right, so you're gonna do it here as well. Put your tick mark in the cut track. All right, and cut those off. And then rotate it. Okay, hey Luann, how are ya? It was good to talk to you yesterday. We had quite the chat. That was pretty nice. Okay, and then, yeah, dark for death. That's how I remember which blade is which. Yes, all right, sometimes you need little, little memory tricks like that. Okay, so we've got, and then, you know what, you can save these if you're crafty. <laughs> but you know, yeah, sometimes I say that, I don't always feel super crafty. You could do fun little uh, pleat on a mini card or something, okay? so. Don't throw away your scraps. I'm sure you can come up with something really cool to do with them. But that was all the hardest part. We've got our scoring done. We have our measuring done. And they look the proper shape. So now you can see that this strip of this inch that's right up the center, that kind of divides it in half. So you can fold each one of those score lines in and then you can see that's why we alternated half inches and an inch. So you're just going to fold right on the score lines and it's gonna come together so nicely. You guys see that? Put that. Okay, so you're gonna do that on each side. So just start to fold it in. Just push right on there. This designer series paper is, it's sturdy, but um, it's thin enough that you really don't have to put too much pressure so cool right okay so here's the thing you don't even need to like you could glue the center if you want uh, let's see let's just put a little strip in there okay and then I'm gonna just push it in 
voila. Okay, so that helps hold it. I'm not gonna use a ton of glue, it'll work fine. What I do is just flip it over and put my adhesive on the back of each little fold here, each little flap. And then we're gonna take that and mount that onto our Whisper White cardstock. So it might hang off just a tad. So you know what, let's go ahead and stick this onto our card base, or not our base, just our layer. So this is the three and three quarter inch um, by five piece of Whisper White onto a four by five and a quarter piece of terracotta tile. And now we're gonna take our whole sticky piece here and it is going to touch tip top to top there. All right, just kind of center that on the paper and then it will all glue down. All righty. So then of course we've got to dress it up. We have to decorate it before we can glue it on our card base. So I've taken some of this, I'm using a lot of this with the um, Ornate Garden Suite. This is the Gold Metallic Edge Ribbon. Absolutely love it. So I'm gonna place this just across the top. So let's go ahead, let me do this. I'll just put a little adhesive on the side first and that will help hold this ribbon in place. Okay, so it's just going right across the front there. So now technically, that's the hardest part. So once you have that done, did we, okay. I'm like, did we fold the card base? Yes, I just have it hidden. So put a little bit more adhesive on your fancy fold panel here. Go ahead and stick it down. <laughs> Be liberal with your adhesive and then your cards won't fall apart. Okay, hey Kim, how you doing? All right, so we have got, this is the hardest part for this done. We've stuck it to our card base and now comes the, the fun part, the decorating. So I've grabbed, just keep a um, little piece of cardboard, a scrap, I was playing with my April Paper Pumpkin Kit and you always get like a little cardboard insert that helps to keep your paper pumpkin content straight. So I'm just using this for now. And I've taken the largest image here from the Ornate Style. And of course it's not all going to fit on this little circle. So we're just going to do a little spotlighting. I will ink my stamp up completely with terracotta tile. And then we'll just kind of see, I want kind of this little corner leaf and a couple of those daisies pointing out. So every time you do this, your card will be just a little bit different, but gorgeous nonetheless. Okay, so we're making two cards. I might as well do two of these at the same time. Just gonna re-ink a little bit here. All right, well, I got pretty close. I'm pretty consistent, I guess. Okay, so I've got that. I'm gonna wash this. This is a darker color, so I'm gonna make sure to keep that nice and clean. I closed it so I don't get it, stick my hands in it. And of course, you know, I'm wearing, wearing a pretty little yellow dress and I don't wanna get terracotta ink on my sleeves. So, all right, so I've cleaned that, put our stamp away, we're good to go. And then these are going to adhere to our scalloped ovals, so yeah, lots of adhesive. Okay, so we'll put these, and this is a cool thing when you spot like this. Um, you could, if you want, go ahead and color these, but I feel like the designer series paper is so fancy, and the, the fold is actually the focal point of the card, so I thought, I think it's fine without coloring. Uh, let me see, what did I do with my dimensionals? Oh, I think I actually finally used up that little sheet that I was finishing and I've got a brand new, brand new sheet right here. I don't know about you guys, but I just kind of bend the pack in half and then do this. So I'm gonna put four on each one here. All right, I only need one for right now. Oh, my fingernails say when this is all over and we can actually 
go places again. I am going to go get myself a manicure and a pedicure. <laughs> what about you guys? What is like the first thing you're going to do when the world returns to a it's new normal? <laughs> Oh, Luann says I need, uh, yes, accountant garters to hold up my sleeves. <laughs> All right, so it's not done yet. I need to add a pretty little bow. And you guys have seen I've I've done tutorials for this, but I use my, my little toaster tongs. So you take your ribbon. All right, or you borrow a friend and make a peace sign, and you can use their fingers. Same thing. All right, so my ribbon goes around, around the back. And then I'm going to pull this over. Okay, so this pulls kind of tight. This piece is going to come around the front. It's gonna poke through the middle. It's going to loop up around the back, over the top, and then I'm going to use that to tie a knot. So usually I do this, I'm gonna move this a little bit because I can only tie bows in one direction. I don't know about you guys. Uh, so usually what I do is I'll actually just stick this pair of um, toaster tongs between my knees <laughs> and then I can work with both hands and then you just trim your shears trim your scissors there slide that off and then grab some glue dots oh Kim says she has those yes these are old this is the perfect size uh, pampered chef sold these years ago they were toaster tongs um, I don't eat a lot of toast so I never actually used them in my kitchen. I bought them specifically for stamping. <laughs> so I have a couple pair and I've always used them for my cards. All right, I wanna trim this up. My, I need to get my shears sharpened a little bit. There we go. So I don't know, maybe Kim, can you tell us? I don't think Pampered Chef sells the tongs, the toaster tongs anymore. Um, but I have in the past had success finding them at camping stores. Um, for example, uh, Lodge Cast Iron had uh, sold toaster tongs. They had some that were a lot bigger. Um, but I don't know. I haven't tried like um, you know any of those camping stores other than than Lodge Cast Iron. But um, okay, so that's the first one. It came out pretty cool. Now let's do the other one. I'm gonna use an old olive base. Again, I'm doing five and a half by eight and a half. All right, just gonna fold that and then set it aside. I will adhere my whisper white layer to my terracotta. So again, the white is three and three quarter by five. The terracotta is four by five and a quarter. Okay. Keep that close by. We are doing the daisies this time with the terracotta edge. So um, I think I want my daisies to show. So again, working from this middle mark where you've got your little tick marks, uh, go ahead and just fold it in and fold it out. You're just alternating your folds. Folding in and out. Okay, and then, oh, I like that. Okay, so do the other side here. So, you, you know, you could put some, let's go ahead, we'll put a little glue just right up the center to keep, see if the, in shape. Okay. All right, so when you do this right, your points should all meet. So that's how I knew I didn't do it right the first time. Um, I'll show you the mistake that I made. Okay, so this is my original, and it started off okay, but I didn't go to my tick mark. I didn't do the right one. Somehow I cut from the wrong mark. All right, so I cut off that little extra piece, which made the whole angle wrong. So then when it folded together, it was like, oops, we're crooked. So if yours looks like that, <laughs> you didn't do it right. It should meet perfectly in the center and be even on all sides for you, okay? So go ahead and use, maybe try it on a piece of scrap paper or paper that, that you don't like. You know, we've all got a ton of designer paper in our stash, right? 
We've been hoarding it because we're afraid to use it. This is a nice way to show it off. Okay, so I've got the daisies on the front. I'm just going to put some adhesive. You don't need a ton of adhesive on this. You don't have to glue all the pleats because it pretty much stays well put together. And then we add that little bit of ribbon on the top and things and that just kind of secures it even more. Okay, so kind of look for the center. All right, then stick it down. Yep, didn't quite find them a little bit. I'm a little off. Good thing I didn't use a ton of glue because I need to, there we go. So make sure your edge lines up. Let's try this again. Okay, perfect. All right, then just take a little bit of you know what would be pretty? Ooh, let me try this. Okay. Um, do I have some in here? I wonder, and I thought maybe I had some of the um, terracotta linen trim, but it looks like, looks like I might, because that would be really pretty. That would be really cool. But since I don't have that handy, yeah i don't know i just i love the just the shimmer of the metallic edge so i guess we'll just go with that because you know what if it works and it's pretty don't mess with it okay so i will i'm gonna glue this to my card base now so i'll just put my adhesive all the way around all right stick my ribbon just across the front And then stick that down. So it's pretty, and it's out of the same paper pack, but you get just a little bit of different look with some of the different patterns in there. And now we've already got our stamped panel prepped. So our dimension, whoops, I peeled my dimensional right off. Okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and stick that right in the center. Very cool. Now I could have, sorry about that, got a phone call right in the middle of the video. Usually I turn my sound off, so <laughs> I'll have to call that person back in just a minute. All right, so do one more ribbon. Again, go around your tongs. It's a little hard to hold them flat here while it's just, just me working. All right, bring your, this piece goes over here. Grab this one, go down through the middle. Up and around. Okay. All right, and then you're gonna tie a knot. However you need to finagle this. All right, there you go. Nice and secure. Trim up your edges. All right, that one got a little frayed on me. Okay. And then pulls, just slides right off. And, okay, I'm like, did I misplace my glue dots already? I'm really not that scatterbrained. All right, let's put a couple of dots on there, make sure it's good and secure. You could do either side. Well, how about we do a, we'll do a left and a right, and that way when I take my video picture, they'll be all pretty. So what do you guys think? How, what did you think of this double pleated fancy fun fold technique using Stampin' Up's Ornate Garden Suite. So we had the Ornate Style stamp that we pulled in here, as well as the Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series paper, which I'm using left and right and just have a bunch of little scraps left in there. So when you order this, you definitely need a couple of packages. <laughs> or if you'd like to try this, oh, I should try this with... Um, some of our retiring designer series papers. Have you guys seen the online store? So pretty much all of Stampin' Up's paper for the most part is marked down at least 30%. You can get so many of the gorgeous paper packs for just $8 and five cents for quite a few of them. Let's see, in the annual catalog, the big papers, where you got are on page one, they start on page 165 to 167. 
But some of them are six, the woven threads is 60% off, 460, Magnolia Garden Lane, are both 805, Follow Your Art is 460, yeah, uh, 805, uh, Dinosaurs are 690, 805, 805, the Mosaic Mood Specialty Paper, as well as the Peacock, um, both on sale for 1015. So go ahead and stock up on Designer Series papers guilt free while they're on special. Make yourself lots of double pleated fancy fun fold cards. And, and when you do, make sure you share them with me so that I can so that I can see your lovely work. All right, thank you guys so, so much. Please be sure to like and follow uh, my page here. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm trying really, really hard to um, get my subscriber count up so that I can do live videos on YouTube as well. Um, but I need a thousand subscribers and right now I'm at 655. So please, please share with your friends and let them know and um, share the love. Thank you guys so much. We'll catch you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>